It's been six years now since the first time I analyzed a bunch of data at work using Microsoft Excel. And today I want to show you my Excel data analysis workflow that covers 99% of the types of analysis I do using the tool. This is not going to be a video about building beautiful, but nevertheless useless and random dashboards. This is going to be a video about how I solve business problems using Excel, how I analyze data, and get insights and next steps using Excel. For those of you who are new here, my name is Mo Chen and I work as a data and analytics analyst in the financial services industry. Excel is my go-to tool for any quick ad hoc analysis up to say a million rows. Anytime when I want quick answers to some business critical problems, I use Excel. Let me show you how by walking you through a hands-on practical example where I'll identify the top suppliers and brands across various categories in my fictitious gym equipment sales data set, look at year-on-year -year growth to see how sales have changed over time, analyze market shares, and even calculate year-to-date and moving annual total profit figures. I think that's enough of an overview for now. Let's dive into the analysis. All right, cool. So this is going to be a pure data analysis exercise. This is, like I said, not going to be one of those YouTube videos where I'm going to create a bunch of shiny stuff that is completely useless and random. I'm going to show you what I use Excel for, which is quick ad hoc data analysis to get the answers to whatever business critical problems that I have and that I just move on. So this is our data set. It's a fictitious uh, sales Oh no, it's a fictitious profit data set, sorry. It's a fictitious gym equipment profit data set. And a super quick tip for you. If you get a data set and the columns are all over the place, you can click in the top left and then double click. And then you can see that all of the columns are beautifully adjusted. Obviously this works for rows as well. So let me just mess up my data set just a little bit. You can see that I'll mess this column up as well. And this one, and this one. Click on the top left, double click, and then you can double click again and you have a neat and tidy data set. So first things first, let's understand the columns. We have only six. Again, it's a simple fictitious data set. So I try to filter out all of the noise and we'll just focus on these columns, category, suppliers, brands, year, month, and the monthly profit. So that's the data that we have. Before we even jump in, the one thing I like to do is you can see that this is what's called a range. And I like using tables because it's just so much easier to use tables when you have a bunch of pivot tables and pivot charts and then everything automatically updates. I won't go into too much detail about you know, this in this video, but uh, I guess, yeah, if you want to learn more about Excel or SQL actually, or Tableau or Python, then Course Careers have a super data analytics course. They've been a, well, yeah, they've been a partner of mine for quite a while now. So yeah, they're good. Check out their course if you want to. But anyway, um, yeah, so let's turn this into a table. And the easiest way to turn this into a table is to press Control and then T. I'm a man of shortcuts. You hit OK, and there you go. What's the big difference now? If you go to the top here, you can see table design, which you didn't have before. Let me just undo this. You see at the top now, you don't have table design. So Control T, hit OK, and then this is a bit too much for me, this design. So I'm going to tone it down just a little bit. I think this looks about right. So the first thing I really want to know is how many suppliers do I have? How many brands do I have for each supplier? And how many categories of gym equipment, uh, well, profit data do I have here? So a really simple way to do it is to insert a pivot table and start doing some analysis. So I'm going to do that. I'll show you two ways to do it. I'll show you the shortcut way, which is just going to be Alt and VT. Hit Enter, and then that's a pivot table. It took me probably two seconds to do it but I'll uh, delete the sheet for now and I'll show you the point and click way as well. So you go to the top, insert pivot table from table, hit okay, there you go, you have your pivot table. And then let's see how many suppliers do we have? Three suppliers, okay, fantastic, easy. And if you're not sure about the count or the sum or any kind of summary figures that Excel would show you, you can always go to the bottom right, right here, and then you'll see the numbers. All right, so we have three suppliers. How many brands do we have? We have nine brands. And what I like to do is go to design. Within design, change the report layout to show in tabular form. Remove the totals. 
And then it's just an easier way to look at all of the brands. And then I'll drag in the categories as well. So how many categories do I have? I have three categories, air bikes, rowing machines, and treadmills, super simple. All right, so now I answered some super basic questions. So we have three suppliers, nine brands, and then we have three categories, just click into the filter and you'll know. Next thing I wanna know is the year on year growth for each of these brands in terms of profits. So what I will do is I'll go to my worksheet on the bottom here, hold down control and then duplicate the, the worksheet. Yeah, so this is good because you're duplicating the, the uh, pivot table as well, which is gonna come in really handy when you're starting to use uh, slicers and timeline filters across all of your pivot tables and pivot charts in a dynamic dashboard. So yeah, it's gonna be great for that. I'm not gonna go into much detail in this video on that kind of stuff. If you you know really wanna learn more, you can get some certifications and you can do some courses online. Uh, yeah, they'll teach you a lot about it. Yeah, and I guess on, on that note, you could, you know, say, for example, go to DataCamp. They have a bunch of good courses, not just on Excel, but, you know, a bunch of other data stuff as well. I learned a bunch of Tableau skills on DataCamp because they have a, like a skills track, a certifications track. They have case studies. They have various tutorials. So, yeah, they're pretty good. And I recently started partnering with them as well because, yeah, they're genuinely good. But anyway, um, yeah, second question, year on year growth how am I gonna solve that problem? So not that difficult. Let me remove the category for now, drop in the monthly profit, and then let me grab the year and move it onto the columns. So now these numbers here, these are the total profit numbers. But what I'm looking for is the year on year difference. So basically I wanna see what's the difference between 2019 and 2018, 2020 and 2019, so on and so forth. So I go to values, value field settings show values as and then all I have to do is select percent difference from and then the base field is obviously year and then the base item is previous yep and then I hit okay and there you go it looks yeah pretty good I think there you go some quick calculations 2024 is straight away I can see off the charts now why is that we can go into the data and we can have a look quickly. So let me go 2024, select a couple here. There you go. 2024 is off the charts because we only have five months worth of data up to and including May. That's why the numbers are off the charts because you're comparing five months of profits to 12 months of profits in 2023. So let me just remove 2024 because it's not a full year and then the numbers look much better, I think. All right, so these numbers, obviously it's, it's you know quite hard to spot which one's good, which one's bad. What I like to do is this is honestly so simple. Go to conditional formatting and then choose some color scales. So whatever you want, you can choose your own rules. I don't care too much because I'm really just after some numbers. So I'll go with the, let me go with this one. I think blue is good, red is bad. Yeah, there we go. So the darker the blue, the larger the increase and the darker the red the larger the decrease. So that's some quick insights for you right there. Biggest growth, 6.91% right here. Biggest decrease, what was it? 7.7 .7 right here. Yeah, that's it, quick insights. All right, so I answered year on year growth. Now the next thing I probably wanna look into is market share. So let me again duplicate my sheet, hold down control, drag and drop the sheet, and then I have a new sheet now. So all I'm gonna do differently this time is I'm gonna move the year onto the rows. I'll move probably suppliers onto the columns. Let me move that away and then, oh, actually, yeah, I wanna move the brand probably onto the columns. Yeah, that makes a lot more sense. And this time, let's change the calculation. So go to value field settings, show values as, and it's not a difference from, all I wanna see really is the row total, the percent of row total, hit okay and now I wanna add back 2024 because we're comparing like for like. And what I wanna do now is remove the conditional formatting. So you go to conditional formatting, manage rules, and then you just delete the rule, hit apply, hit okay, done. So now what's happening here is that each of these rows should add up to 100. And if you go to the bottom right here, you can see that the sum is indeed 100. You can check this one as well, is indeed 100 or 
you can just do a sum function. So it's going to be sum b5 to, what is it, j5. There we go. And then you can drag it down. And there you go. Everything is 100%. Fantastic. Okay, so the market share cannot be more than 100%, right? Because that's that's all of the profits in the market. So that's the entire market. So all I'm going to do here is insert a line chart. I'll pick this one. And then it looks obviously not great right now because we didn't actually select in which category do we want to look at the market share. So I go to pivot table analyze and then insert slicer and I want the category hit OK. And now we have a pretty decent slicer. All right, so air bikes. Cool. Let me look at that. There we go. Make it a bit bigger. And yeah, there you go. I have three different categories you can click through and you can see how the market shares change over time. If you don't like the layout of this chart, you can quickly change, you know, the layout into something else. Let me pick something that looks, well, not ugly. So yeah, maybe this one. I think this one looks all right. And then you can change the colors as well. So people like dark stuff. Ooh, that is very glowy. Um, maybe this one. Yeah, all right. Okay, this is not too bad. So I'll go with this one. And let me just interpret the charts for you really quickly. So let's pick air bikes, for example. What can I see straight away? So the thing I can see straight away is that Apex Athletics, they started increasing their market share and their profits. Uh, you know, they, yeah, it's it's at 17.97%. Fantastic. And then what's that? Spartan Sports, they're the worst as of 2024. Rowing machines, I can see that, is this Elevate Fitness? Yes, Elevate Fitness improved over time, which is fantastic. And then the purple one, Titan Training, they, yeah, they definitely didn't improve over time. They're actually at the bottom of the list now. And if we're looking at treadmills, it's going to be Spartan Sports, who have, uh, I wouldn't say dominated the market share, but obviously, you know, they increased their market share over time. And then Hercules Gear did the exact opposite. Simple analysis, that's it. Let's move on. So the next thing we're going to do is I did tell you that we were going to do some calculations. So we're going to do some year-to-date calculations, and we're going to do some moving annual total profit calculations. All right, super quick break. And don't worry, this is not a sponsored message. This is a message from me, Mo. If you gained any value out of this video or any one of my videos so far, then can I ask you three simple favors, please? One, subscribe to the channel. It helps everything I do more than you know. Two, check out the Ultimate Data Portfolio. Why? Because it gets you closer to your next data job. If you don't believe me, just check out what others have said. And three, if you're truly committed to getting your next data job and making more money, then check out my one-to-one -one mentorship program. So year to date essentially is, let me pick an example, say if we're in um, 2018 May, I want all of the profit to be summed up from January to May. That's it. And then if we're in August, then I want all of these profits, so the eight months worth of profits to be summed up. But if we're in 2019 July, then I want obviously the first seven months of profits to be summed up. So let me call this uh, new column profit year to date because, well, it is the profit year to date. And it's going to be super simple. So nothing to worry about, a bunch of sum ifs. So first of all, it's asking for the sum range. So I'm just going to use my keyboard to navigate around. If you're on a Windows, it's just the arrow keys and the control key. And then if you're on a Mac, it's going to be the arrow keys and the command key. Super simple. So, okay, so the sum range for me, and I'm going to hold down control right now and press uh, space. And then I select the entire column. Fantastic. Okay, the first criteria range is going to be the category. And then the category obviously has to be equal to the to the category of the current row. So yeah, treadmill in this case, and then criteria range two, supplier, again, it has to be the supplier that occupies that row of data. So in this case, peak performance gear, criteria range three, it's gonna have to be the brand that's in the current row. And then year, it has to be the current year. So again, in this case, 2018, and then month. And this is where it's gonna get a little bit tricky, not too tricky, but because we want the year-to-date um, profits to be summed up, we want all of the months 
up to and including the current month. So it's just a simple math calculation, less than or equal to ampersand sign, and then you pass in the current month. And then if this doesn't work now, then I'm gonna look like a fool. But it did work, fantastic. Okay, so let me just do some formatting because we're talking about uh, profit figures here, currency. And you can see that it's uh, British pound here because I live in the United Kingdom. So yeah, it's not US dollars this time. I won't change it to dollars because yeah, whatever, it can be pounds this time for a change. So let's do some sense check. So for the first year, uh, these profits, right? Let, let's just do some sense check. So let's pick 2018 May, and then the 65,476, this number should be equal to the sum of these five months. And you can go to the bottom and check 65,476. Yes, it is fantastic. All right, we can move on. And obviously, we can do the first 12 months. There you go. Profit year to date, it's going to be 152,585. And on the bottom here, you can see that it's 152,585 indeed. So the profit year to date numbers are legit. Fantastic. Let's just pick another one just in case. This one right here, let's add up the profits for the first three months right here. So this 41,036, 41,036. Okay, I did a sense check. Everything works. Cool. Next thing I'm going to do is we're going to calculate the profit. Um, what should I call it? Total. Moving annual total. Yeah. I think that sounds good because essentially what we're going to do now is let me explain it really simply. We're always going to look at a 12 month period. So I want the profit figures summed up for the last 12 months, no matter where I am. So if I pick uh, 2019 May, for example, I want the profits for this year. So this is the year to date profit. And on top of that, I would also like seven months from the year before. So all of these months, so seven months from the year before, five months from the current year. So that's seven plus five, 12 months, and that would be the profit for the last 12 months. But if I pick another month, for example, 2020 uh, October, so I have 10 months in this year, I want all of these profits, and then I would like two more months from the last year. So to calculate the profit moving annual total, we need to, first of all, um, well, yeah, pick the profit year to date. And on top of that, we just add on whatever months we want to make it a full 12 month period from the previous year. So this is going to be profit year to date. Plus, again, it's going to be some ifs. I bet it's boring by now, but the sum range is going to be the profit month. And then the category, again, it has to be equal to the category of the current row. And then second criteria, supplier has to be equal to the supplier in the current row. And then we have brand has to be obviously equal to the brand of the current row. And then we have year. And it gets a little bit tricky here because I want obviously the year, but I want the previous year. So take away one because you already included the profit year to date. So you already have the profits from the current year. What you're trying to do is onto the current year's profit, you want to add on last year's profit, however many months you need to make it a full 12 month period. So that's why the minus one to get to the previous year. And then in terms of months, again, simple math calculation. So the month has to be greater than whatever current month you're in in this year. So greater than and then ampersand sign, and then the current month, and then hit enter. And again, if it's not going to work, I'm going to look like a fool. But it did work. So good. Oh, by the way, the only thing I would like to add as well, if you want to learn this type of thinking, how to actually solve problems using data, and how to like, you know, actually approach job applications and, and how to do stuff in the real world, then I would honestly, I would, I would urge you to go onto my websites and look around there and check out the resources because, yeah, you know, like all the stuff I created, really, the ultimate data portfolio, the ultimate data roadmap, and like the six other bonuses that come with it, the Job Seeker Academy, the ultimate project builder, they, they focus on implementation, they focus on hands-on stuff, they focus on practical stuff, they focus on relevant stuff. So I've done so much learning and sometimes you know you're in this forever cycle of not implementing things so make sure you actually implement things like this for example 
Okay, let's compare the numbers. For the first 12 months, they should be the same because there was no previous year. Makes sense. All of these numbers are the same. Now, if we look at row 14, my profit moving annual total is 152423. So this should be the profit in 2019 uh, January plus the 11 months before. So if I select these 12 months, I can see if I go to the bottom right that I have 152423. Okay, great. Let's pick something randomly. I'll pick row 86. So I'm in August, which means this profit right here, this 95552, this should be the year-to-date profit um, plus the, the four months from before. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And then, oh, sorry. Yeah, actually, I picked the wrong one. Uh, because obviously I'm in 2018 here. There's no prior year. Apologies. So let me pick another one. 2019 August, for example. It just goes to show, you know, with data analysis, trial and error. And I'm pretty certain I'm going to leave this piece in as well. I'm not going to cut it out just to show you that, you know, not everything has to be perfect first time. Clearly, I didn't pay attention here and I should have lesson learned. So 2019 August um, the moving annual total profit is 152337. So this number should be these eight months in the current year. So this is the year to date and then the four months from the previous year. So one, two, three, four. And what's the number 152337 on the bottom right here? Fantastic. The profit moving annual total numbers are correct as well. And just to do some I guess, you know, pivot table data analysis manipulation with it. Let me go back to this sheet right here. And let me duplicate it. So holding down control, dragging and dropping the sheet. I'll remove this chart because I don't need it. I'll remove the slicer as well. Click into the table and this time let's do something different. So first of all, go to pivot table analyze and then you go refresh, refresh all. And then now all of a sudden you see that our two new calculations, the two new columns, they appeared right here. Okay, so I'm going to remove the monthly profit figures because I don't need them. And then the next thing I'm going to do, put year on the filters, I'll put month on the filters, I'll put brand on the rows, and then I'll put suppliers on the rows as well. And now the only thing I really want to see is the moving annual total profit for a specific month. Obviously, these figures now are large, very, very large, because my year and my month, I'm selecting all, which I shouldn't. I just want the moving annual total profit for the last month of data that I have. So I'll pick 2024, 2024, I think May was the last month, probably. Yeah, let me just go back and see 2024. And yes, May is the last month. Okay, so I'm back here. Let me just uh, format this. Oh yeah, this is another thing you can do. You don't always have to go to values right here on the right and then go to value field settings. You can just double click and it gets you to the same place. So I'll do some quick formatting, number format, number, yeah, thousand separator. Okay, it's just easier to look at the number. And there you go. This is the, this is the moving annual total profit for these brands, for these suppliers, which means that over the last 12 months, up to and including 2024 May, Iron Strength Equipment Co. for the Forge Fitness brand sold, well, made this much profit. And you can obviously add in the category as well if you want to, and then you'll see a different kind of breakdown. And then if you select everything, then you will see the total across all of the brands, all of the categories, and all of the suppliers. So yeah, I think pretty simple stuff. That's about it. All right, that's all from me for now. If you enjoyed this video, then please subscribe to the channel as there's definitely a lot more value add content like this one coming. And you should probably also check out these videos right here. Thank you so much for taking just a little time out of your day to watch this. And I shall see you in the next one.